Hi everybody, welcome to Speedway Motors. My name's Tim. I'm one of the techs here and I'm really glad you could join us today. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the common calls we get to our tech line when it comes to brake kits. And you know, it's very common when a person buys an old car, the first thing they want to do is get rid of the old drum brake setup up front and switch over to disc brakes. Makes total sense to me. If it's a car you're going to drive, it's nice to have a brake kit that if something goes wrong out on the road, it's easy to find parts uh, if you need to replace something. But then also, if you just need to service it, maybe you just need to put some new brake pads. You know, it's it's a snap to, to switch over brake pads on a disc brake setup, so that's always nice. I can see why we sell a lot of brake kits for cars uh, to convert them over, and if you have an old car where you're thinking about doing it, uh, you know, give us a shout. You know, we can probably fix you up with a brake kit for your application. Now, once you've made the, the jump and you've done it and you've bought the brake kit, you know, it may be that it's the first thing you're doing on the car and it, it may be that you're, uh, you have never put a brake kit on a car before or had to deal with brakes much uh, for that matter. So what I did is I brought a couple pieces with me today that can hopefully walk you through some of the, the most commonly asked questions, the most common pitfalls that we have uh, here at Speedway Motors when people are working on their disc brakes. I brought two calipers with me. These are both GM midsize calipers. One is actually a 68 to 77 uh, GM midsize and then also a more modern uh, 78 to 88 what we call a metric caliper. Both work very well and are the most commonly used in our front and rear brake kit. So uh, they're a good uh, example of, of what you might run into. Our most common problem uh, with these of late, and when I asked the techs, you know, what should I talk about? They said, oh, Tim, you got to bring the rubber lines in and, and talk about the, the trouble with those because we get a lot of calls on it. If you look at this rubber line, you'll see, hopefully through the camera lens there, that this thing's actually angled. It's not just a straight banjo fitting like you'd see on one of our braided uh, setups. Uh, this doesn't seem to be a big deal. I mean, if you've put brakes on your 98 Chevy pickup, you're probably accustomed to this. But when you put it on one of these metric calipers, it seems pretty straightforward too. Actually, it has a cutaway that actually clears that crimp. When you put this down on your caliper, you can see how they're kind of designed to work together. Uh, sometimes, depending upon who you get the calipers from, this cutout won't be deep enough and it'll actually bottom out on the crimp part of the fitting. So this thing will sit at an angle and no matter how many uh, crush washers you put on there, it just won't do a good enough job sealing it. We really run into that when we get into the older style caliper and you can see on this one it doesn't have that cutaway. Uh, so it just seems to be intuitive for customers to want to put this line on the caliper like that uh, because it tucks it close to the caliper. But in fact you'll want to flip it the other way. That gives you plenty of clearance for the crimp part of the fitting and you won't have any issues. We get a lot of calls where people just can't figure out why they're getting a leak no matter what they do, no matter how tight they tighten that bolt, it just, it just can't go away. And that's the reason this thing has a little bit of a gap under there. Uh, and I wish you could get a good look at that on the camera, uh, but look out for that. That's, that's a pretty big deal. Another thing we get a lot of calls on is, you know, guys just won't use two uh, crush washers on their banjo bolt. You know, they'll think they just need to use one on the caliper side. These are actually cut, obviously, for a crush washer on both sides to seal it in both locations. So always be aware of that. One thing I would tell you is that you just can't beat copper crush washers. Usually these things will do the trick 99% of the time. Every once in a while you'll get something that doesn't seal up with your copper crush washer. I would tell you to look at your mating surfaces really closely on your caliper. When we look at these uh, from a QC standpoint to make sure they look good when they come into us, but every once in a while you'll have one that has a little bit of a metal filing or you know a little bit of a just a little piece that just didn't get fully machined off uh, and it'll cause a problem. You just won't get it to seal no matter what you do. So make sure that's nice and clean and everything looks good before you go to tighten your bolts down. Uh, one of the things we sell here at Speedway is a thing called a Stato Seal. I sometimes will give these to customers if they have that really tricky caliper that they just can't get sealed up. And what the Stato Seal is, it looks just like a crush washer on the outside, but on the inside it has a rubber element that looks like a little rubber O-ring that kind of gives it that extra sealing power. And these work really great in a brake uh, situation. So something to keep in mind if you just have that really finicky setup. So don't forget the Stato Seals. One question we get a lot too is this little clip that comes in with our, our calipers. This is called an anti-rattle clip. 
you know, people always ask me, what do I do with that? Most hot routers just throw this away, just get rid of it. Uh, it doesn't really, it's not really needed for what we're doing uh, in the hot rod world and, and, uh, and custom world. Uh, so it doesn't fit a lot of the aftermarket brake pads anyway. So I just tell customers just to, to get rid of that. One other thing I'll say about these calipers is that they are side specific. If you look at them, they're marked left and right. Left and right as if uh, you're sitting in the vehicle, your right side is going to be the passenger side and your left side is going to be the driver's side of the car. So a left side caliper here would be the driver's side and this is designed to be a left side if it's behind the axle it puts the bleeder screw facing up and that's very important uh, you know this caliper doesn't really care where it's mounted on the disc it'll stop it no matter what but you always want the bleeder to point up it just makes it easier to bleed that fluid out Sometimes if you get one of the rare brake kits that we sell that mount the calipers in the front of the axle center line, you'll have to swap these. You'll put the left side, marked left side caliper on the right side and right on the left and then what that does, it points your bleeder back up. So puts you in pretty good shape there. So I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, give us a call. We're always happy to talk about brakes here at Speedway Motors. Check out our website, speedwaymotors.com. Again, we have a great group of techs. Always happy to walk you through that first step, getting your car back on the road, especially when it comes to brakes. So have a great day and thanks again for visiting us.